Good morning, everyone. How's it going? You are the ones that either made it through that coffee line early, or you don't like coffee, or hot chocolate, or chai. You guys should try our chai. It's really, really good. Yeah, the I've been chai getting is really it. Good. I don't know if I trust people that don't like coffee. That's I haven't. You know, that's it's kind of a key part of my day. Then you're not trusting me right now because I currently don't can't. like coffee. Wow. Okay. Uh, yeah. I won't say that. Yeah. Well, I cut it out. Cut out the coffee. Smoking. This is making sense. Okay. Go ahead. I love coffee. Go to the coffee shop. Get a chai, but tell them you want a dirty chai because the dirty chai here is really good. Actually, you're probably going to need just a little bit of coffee for this first song because it's like super, super happy. It is. It's and very so, happy. yeah, if you, if you aren't already there, you need to get there ASAP. It's true. On you the guys joy train. Weathered the cold weather. You made it. Yeah, but now you have to like thaw out and like stand up and get loose. It's not that cold, but I'm from Florida, so it's really cold, you know what I mean? It's kind of cold. You guys are probably really used to it, though. I walk outside and it's like 40, and I'm like, mm, I don't know. I don't know if I can do this today. This is 40's cold. It's cold to me. 50's cold. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Agree. Cool. Because everybody from here loves it. Do you guys love the cold? Oh, See? some yes. See? Yeah. I, I really just want a few more days that are like 70. Who's already playing Christmas music in your car? Oh, hey. Who, who has their tree up? Ariel Kelly, where are you? <laughs> Ariel should have her tree up by Ariel now. Ariel probably does have her tree up. She's, she puts it up like I don't know. weeks before I don't know. Newborns oh, like change guys. life. Yeah. It's true. Yeah. She might need some help. No, no, no. Protect it. Well, I know that Protect God has a great service, uh, no, no, no. a great day for us in playing, but also I, I really uh, just... We just finished first service, and it was um, really, really amazing. I know God is going to speak to you through it. He's definitely uh, spoke Great to me. Great saying how amazing the message is. Everybody there really, uh, really felt it. So uh, stay encouraged. Keep your hearts open. I know that God has some really great things for us this morning. And uh, if you would, just stand up, and uh, let's spend some time with the Lord.
never see again As we cross over to your promise Our past and behind us Nothing can stop us now As we cross over to your promise
and I simply come longing just to bring something that's worth that will bless your heart that I'll bring you more than a song for a song in itself is not what you have required you search much deeper within through the way things appear you're looking into my heart oh i'm coming back to the heart of worship and it's all It's all about you, Jesus. I'm sorry, Lord, for the thing I've made. When it's all about you, it's all about you. It's all about you. 
search much deeper through the way things have been. You are looking into my heart. Be right where Jesus is and not even recognize that He is near. I mean, like, there's some people I think you're totally, like, aware, like, the presence of God is really strong, and, like, you can just kind of move right into that, but other people are not aware, not aware, and I think how, you know, what keeps us from that, and it made me, it made me think about John the Baptist, how, you know, how the spirit of Elijah, you know, came on John the Baptist, now the spirit of Elijah comes, at time and he comes so the people will repent to prepare themselves to receive Christ, right? Thinking about that, you know, because it wasn't that Jesus couldn't come without them first repenting and John the Baptist needed to come so that, so that, that Jesus could come, because Jesus could come anyway, but the problem is when he got there that no one was gonna recognize or see him or feel him or experience him because he had not prepared. It was our problem, not Jesus, did you get it? So, so what is repentance all about? And, I, and you know, it is preparing for Jesus to get to you. It's preparing so he can come and meet those needs that everybody has because everybody needs God. You're not the exception. Every, there, you have a need that only God can feel of some sort. You're in a place today, and if you ain't at that place, you're gonna get in that place at some point because God is your source and has made himself to be that. So at some point, you're gonna need him. But what is it that keeps so we keep him at bay, but then we're going to get in a place of desperation. You understand? You're not going to live your whole life and not get to a point that you like fall on your knees and go, God, okay? Because it's going to happen. And some of you are in that place today. But here's the thing. What repentance is about is so much removing all the legal rights of the enemy to your life. Any agreement that you have with the enemy being removed. So anything that you actually believe about yourself that is a lie, you can believe something and actually not be true. Do you know that? You ever experienced that? You thought it was this way and you find out, oh wow, well, I was totally wrong. So you can believe something that is not the truth of God. It may be true and it may be facts. You can believe something that's actually a lie. And the, the, what they say is everybody lives out of their own truth, right? But your truth can actually be a lie. Is the tricky part. So uh, everybody lives out of, out of 10, typically 10 lies that keep them from the promises. They think about what are, can you identify some lies that you actually might be living your life of that is keeping you from going fully into what God has for you? It'd be important that you find those lies because you need to repent of them and clear the way so that Jesus can actually come. He, you can actually see him coming. You can move into what he has for you. You can receive who you really are. So lies can look like things that have been confirmed through your whole life. And I'm gonna tell you, the world will confirm all the enemy's lies to you. You are this, you are that, it'll give you labels. You're not good enough. You're not lovable. You're not worthy, you're, you're not valuable. You're not accepted. Let me tell you, God fully loves you right now. You are fully accepted right now. Now, the problem is you might be living as a lie. <laughs> you might, you, you, and, and God accepts you just the way you come. But let me tell you, we all come with a pack full of lies, of what we, lies about what we believe about ourselves. It's always going to be this way. I, th these are some lies. I'm going to always struggle financially. I never can keep a job. I, I, I'm always sick. I'm always depressed. I, I, you know, whatever the lies are, until you repent of them, and look, they can be generational. You say, yeah, but my mother was angry. My mother's mother was angry. She was bitter, bitter, so of course I'm bitter. Yes, of course you're bitter because you're living in the same ancestral lie that they lived into. And until you repent of it, it, it may jump over you, but it's gonna be on your kids. Because until it's repented of, 
And you know, I think there's honestly, we have this idea that we don't need to ask God for forgiveness for things that were put on us. If you've taken up a lie and you're living into a lie, that is sin because you're not living in the truth of God of who you are. So you, whatever your lie is that you're living into, and I'll tell you there's something about a lie. When it comes to worship, worship cannot nurture a lie. Because a lie is like a seed, just like the truth is a seed. And God puts his truth in you, a seed of truth. This is what, this is my promise for you. This is what I have for you. And if you, you can nurture that in worship, you can nurture it in, the, in God's word and it'll just grow and grow and grow. But you know you can do the same thing with a lie. You don't want to give birth to a lie. Because that'll lead to death. And that's the plans of the enemy who's a thief and a liar, right? To steal the truth of who you are and what God has for you. To get you to believe a lie. And you'll know it's a lie because when you go to worship, you can't even move into worship. Because, because <laughs> worship, you can't do it. It's like it blocks. But when you're believing the truth of what God has said and the promises he has for you, you can worship. God says, I'm loved. God says that I'm valuable, that I have worth. God says he created me. He has purpose and plan for my life. And when I worship that, I can worship that way. But if I come as a lie, as who I not am, who I'm not am, who I'm not, if I come and I try to worship, I can't even worship. And I'll tell you one big thing, and you need to understand this because I'm telling you, it's taken down the church in America more than anything else. We take up offense because we come so wounded with all of our lives of who we are, and there's somebody in the church that's going to affirm it to us because they're all broken and hurting too. And then we get the confirmation of our lie, and then we're like, I'm never going to that place again. Bunch of bitter people there. Well, you're bitter. You know? So we get the confirmation for our lives. We're done with that. And we become the very thing that we hated in someone else. And we believe it. So we're just never going back. Boy, isn't the enemy tricky. Isn't he tricky? He sure is. And while you're busy not following God because somebody hurt your feeling, he's stealing everything you got. He's stealing your kids. He's making plans. Yep, yep. And you're going to get somewhere down the road and you're going to say, God, what happened? But we didn't have to go that way. And I believe it all starts with repentance. And I'm going to ask you guys to find the 10 lies this week. I'm telling you, find ten, the 10 lies that you're living your life out of. What are they? What do you say about yourself? If you describe yourself, how do you say, well, I'm, I'm really stressed out. That's not a, that's a lie. That's not the truth. God says, you're joyful. You're blessed. Find the lies and denounce them, renounce them, and take the cross. Say, so you know what? That's not who I am. And I want you to find what the opposite is generally true. Just the opposite. But you, find God's word to you on that. Find the affirmation of God. You bitter? You angry? Is it? Well, how do you describe yourself? Because renounce those things, repent of them. God, I'm sorry for believing that was who that I am. Because it's not what your word says about me. Now I want you to just think right now. I want you to get one lie because this is a season of being healed of the wounds and we, and and hurts and offenses that we've taken up because. They're all sin. Your offense that you have toward the church or someone else is sin, baby. And I'll tell you, it gets legal rights to the enemy. You don't think you need to clear that out? You better clear it out because the enemy will come right in and get what you got. I'm telling you what, I'm telling you like it is. While you're busy being bitter and angry, he'll come and steal what you got because he's got legal rights to all that's yours when you hold on to those things. Now you think what it is you need to repent of right now and just in this moment, because I don't want the enemy to have anybody in this church. I don't, want the, I don't want the enemy to have anything that you have. I don't want him to steal from you financially. I don't want him to keep you from the blessings and the promises of God for you and your children and the generations to come. Identify the lies in your ancestry. Identify them. Is there pornography there? Is there adultery there? Identify them, repent of them because it might not come through you, but it'll bounce to the child that you have. So God, right now, I pray you just bring to mind, Lord God, everybody in here 
I pray that this week, God, you'll bring to mind the lies that we've lived as truth held on to, God, that we need to repent of this week. And God will even make lists. During the message today, God, I pray you bring them to mind. They'll just begin to make lists in their journals and list, God, on a piece of paper, an app, whatever they can get a hold of, begin to make the list of the 10 lies they're living their life out of. And God, right now, I pray in this house, you will bring a lie to mind of everybody, every person in here, how they're identifying themselves, who they say that they are, even why they're on, watching online and they're not here. What is the lie that they believe? Get it in your mind and heart right now. What lie are you believing about yourself? You don't think you're loved? You don't think you're good enough? Come on. What is the lie that is not the truth of what God says? Right now, I want you to let it come to your mind. Now, God, we repent. It's kind of in your heart. You can whisper it, whatever. God, I repent of this lie. Say it, whatever that lie is, just let it come to your heart. Just, God, I repent right now. I'm sorry for believing it. And the next step is if I truly repent, I turn away from that lie in the opposite direction. And instead, I receive the truth. God, of who you say that I am. If I'm believing that I'm not loved, that I'm not enough in some way, then right in this moment, you're believing that God fully and completely loves you just as you are and that you are accepted by Him. If you are believing a lie that you are whatever, God, we repent of that right now and we accept the truth of what you have to say about this situation. God, bring the truth right now to their hearts. I want you to hear and see from the Lord right in this moment the truth about you. God, we receive that. We receive that truth right now and we thank you, Lord. We thank you, God, and we praise you, God, for just setting us free of that. Thank you, Lord. Now listen, there's nine more that you need to find this week and you need to get set free from them. I'm telling you the truth right now. If you do not do what I am saying, you will never go into the promises. You'll never be free financially. You'll never walk into your true identity. You'll never walk into what God has for you. You'll never cross over. I want you to identify, help your children identify those lies, the things that they believe that are not what God has to say about their lives and clean them out in the street. Repent with them. Help them grab hold of the truth of what God has to say about them. And then begin to affirm those truths in your children. Yes, you're completely and fully loved. You're created by God. You're purposed by God. Begin to, begin to undo those lies all week. That, no, that's not true. This is what God says. This is what we're going to go with now. Amen? Amen? Let's give God praise for just a moment. God, we thank you. We thank you, God, you're setting us free. We thank you, God, you're healing our hearts. We thank you, God, that we're walking into the truth. We thank you, God, we're leaving this land for the promises that you have for us, God. We thank you, Lord. We thank you, God. I will have everything God has for me.